What's going on there, Reject Nation? G and J here today to watch the movie. Nobody! We've been wanting to watch this movie for a while. As you can see, we've been doing a lot more movie reactions here at The Real Rejects as of late. So subscribe and click the notification bell to get notified when our next reaction is up. Also, full-length watch-alongs where you sync up with the time code for Nobody will be at our Patreon page. Cover a whole bunch of crap over there as well. Thanks to all of Become Super Rejects. But if you can't do that, the least you can do is leave a like and a comment. We were very, very much appreciated. And the handsome devils over at Prepper. Thank you guys so much for doing this. But yeah, I love the trailer for this. Love Bob Odenkirk. Can't wait for the next season of Better Call Saul. Let's get into this. Protect the cat. Aww. It's a kitty. Who the fuck are you? Me? Um... Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Come on! <laughs> garbage day! It's the garbage. So routine. Did he get the garbage? <laughs> It'll end with him getting the garbage. <laughs> Put the phone down. Cash. Now. But that's about all there is. That, that's it? I'll use a debit card. <laughs> Take it. Note. Give me your ring. Give me your fucking ring. I'm married to your wife now. No, Whoa. son. Let him go, son. I said let him go. Oh. oh. Just, just, just. You pussy pop, you pussy you bitch. Nobody's talking to him. Did you even take a swing? She had it. Could have taken her, Dad. You know, if that was my family, <laughs> we're gonna get out of your hair. You just leave that garage door closed, okay? You're a shitty cop, you know that? <laughs> you are so <laughs> condescending. <laughs> if that was my family, I would have risked getting my family killed. <laughs> I wouldn't have been a bitch. <laughs> you had a golf club. <laughs> They only had guns. <laughs> <laughs> you had it coming, man. <sighs> oh, no. Yeah, I was an auditor, so kind of a nobody. Pretty dry story. Don't care. Just want to finish up the project and call it a day. What about your Uncle Charlie? I actually already left him a message. That's right, Grandpa. He actually saw some action. Yeah, maybe. But if you were his offspring. <laughs> oh, and um, you missed the garbage. I just really want the garbage taken out. Could you put it out the night before, maybe? <laughs> oh, I took all the coffee. <sighs> it's reasons like this why Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. <laughs> <laughs> Can't keep a handle on things at home. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, the old man croaked. He didn't have much to leave, but at least I got something out of it. Honey, come on. At least I got this compensation machine out of it. 4.9 liter V8, zero to 60, and I'm about to find the fuck out. Oh, he's gonna hijack that at some point. Zero to 60, I'm gonna find out here in this residential neighborhood. I was just trying to keep damage to a minimum. Yeah, how's that working out for you? Everybody's safe, so. Jesus. Safety's on. <laughs> Keep my sister safe, bro. He got robbed from his holy sonny to be. Crazy. <laughs> oh, good spot. Your son will never find it. Hey. Oh, it's the office. So, look, I thought that out. <laughs> I'm thinking you did the best thing you could. Bullseye. 
I mean, you being you. Holy crap, that's Michael Ironside. I had electrical tape on the handle. So Smith and Wesson hadn't been shot in a long while. It was, uh... Ha 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 ha. Now I know why you didn't do what you didn't do. Hmm, interesting. I know what you're thinking about, and I wish you wasn't. Don't do nothing stupid, you hear me? <gasps> the pop resembling the, his own state. <laughs> Visuals to <laughs> pop himself! <laughs> oh man. Better an actor movie. Can't what it was. find it. Well, you can't find what? My kitty cat bracelet. Where was it? Mm -hmm. In here. You sons of bitches. I'm gonna kill those two. I'm sure it'll turn up somewhere. Oh God, <laughs> he snapped. I think you could hear the moment. <laughs> All it took was a kitty cat bracelet. Yeah, I'm sensing a theme in these guys' movies. There's this thing I gotta do. Then you best go do it. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Agent Mansell, FBI. <laughs> Your ID is a badge. Expired by about 20 years. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that ain't you in the photo. Who are you? I was getting my tattoo done. Just a man. I was looking for someone. You probably shouldn't flash cheese like that around here, bro. There are three types of people who, as you say, flash cheese. <laughs> people who don't know any better, people who are seeking to intimidate, and people like me who wish with every fiber of their being that someone would try to take it from them. Ooh, do oh, us. God. Uh, thank you for your service. I'm getting out of here. Should have called this movie Wrist Tats. <laughs> 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 He's locked or <laughs> barricaded or something. <laughs> Smart move, brother. Send me in the direction of this person. Oh, right there. Luis! Rico huele, mi amor. Huele barato. Camouflage. No es la comida, es la compañía. Ya deja. Oh my god. Damn. The kitty cat bracelet. <laughs> Kill the baby! Kill the baby! <laughs> that baby has that bracelet, I swear to God. Ouch, Whoa, ouch, buddy. Ouch. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, why didn't you get the kitty cat bracelet? They say God doesn't close one door without opening another. Please, God, open that door. He just needs an excuse to break bad. This girl's gonna get home safe tonight. Right for me. I hope these assholes like hospital food. Ha ha. Take it out on them. What are you still doing here, old man? Do they just want to chill on the bus? Ha ha! I'm gonna fuck you. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> 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 Ow. Nice. Ouch. Ow. Ooh. Whoa. Ow. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> 
<laughs> oh. Nice. <laughs> End of the line. <laughs> Booyah. Booyah, baby. Is it bad? Get back up! Unleash you are now beast. reborn. <laughs> Evil dies tonight! There you go, buddy. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh, man. Run! Run! Oh, yes! Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's going so hard oh. on them. <laughs> oh. Yes. Oh, God. Nah, now you've done it. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, he's choking on his own blood, man. Yeah, that guy's gonna die. Oh no, don't tell me. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Ouch. Sorry about the mess. <laughs> I was gonna say, maybe murdering them is a little too far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll be fine. Hey. Hey. I couldn't sleep. I was thinking about the garbage. <laughs> it's been a hell of a day. I can see that. Just like old times, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, so she knows about his past. Huh? I miss you. I'm, I'm always right here. I feel like she's a little excited about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is gonna bring a spark back. <laughs> <laughs>
and watch all this money. No. Oh, 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 oh. Ah, crap. I'm out. No need to pay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you can just leave. Rush him off, can you? <laughs> I mean, he almost threatened to fire her, so. <laughs> you know? Because you know wrong, Miss my mom. Oh, no. Jesus Christ. Everybody get to the basement. <laughs> oh. Don't call 911. <laughs> a bit of a video feed so they can watch you. Very entertaining movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is gonna be gruesome. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, damn. Nice. Ah. Hit him with the lasagna. Ah. Very Ow. cool. Oh. Lasagna smash. <laughs> Damn. Cool. Oh. oh, man. You're reducing the equity on the house. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Hmm. Only his son got to see some of that. Tell the var the bazo. The Marankil is that pay it. What happened if you shot him? <laughs> drive off the food and take him with <laughs> for your insulin. <laughs> Might drop to the river and then lose the goods. How wait. Hmm? Worth it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, 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 nice. Cool. Good shot. That was a great shot. He would have died. Just saying. And I do not ever suspend disbelief in my, uh, my movie going experience. Yeah, how, how much blood alone has he I've spat up? He's officially pulled out. He's got no <laughs> blood left in his body. I used to be what they call an auditor for those three letter agencies. An auditor, as in the, the last guy any organization wants to see at their door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I used to make sure that there was no one left to it. Bored him to death. That thing I had to go to, it escalated. Heads up, okay? No, don't let him be the all is lost moment. No, he'll kick their asses too. Lasagna's ruined. Oh. <gasps> Crack of the bear symbolizing. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys! So uh, I need your help to clean this up. <laughs> I need to take care of this. What is this? It is what it is. I need you to trust me right now. Come on, kiss hap. <laughs> Close that distance. Come back. We'll deal with us then. We will see a couple's counsel right then. Well, fellas. Here we are. <laughs> Three million bucks from a U.S. military base in Revolto, Italy, and his prize was me looming over him with a Walter PPK. No, oh, wait. Uh, it was a suppressed HK USB. <laughs> Alan was living in Boise, Idaho. He had a wife. She came with two kids. Nothing there to skim. And he was smiling like a goddamn Buddha. <laughs> Motherfucker! <laughs> Bone burns to ash at 1,500 degrees. And this basement is designed to double that, so they won't be finding you among the rubble. It lasted a lot longer than I expected. Bad. Go take your neighbor's car. Ha! Baddest oh. ass needle drop of all time. I see trees. Pretty awesome. And vinyl is highly flammable. Good call. No bright, blessed day. Could have sold that house made a killing. <laughs> 
start a whole new life off the grid with that house made money. It up or... <laughs> you better have a gun or that blanket, Gramps. His hands are guns. Ha 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 Please turn that shit down. <laughs> what a G. Runs in the family. I'm buying this place. We put our blood, sweat, and tears into this place. Charlie, sit your ass Listen down. to your father. Right oh! Breathe. Breathe deep, okay? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> and Hutch's balls grew three sizes that day. <laughs> oh no. Thought he had a big ass gun for a second. Yeah. <laughs> it's a shoulder mounted cannon. Ooh, yeah. Go Hutch. Hey. Rizza? Rizza? Yeah. Huh? Listen, Hutch, I'm not coming out of hiding to save your white ass. Oh. Come out of hiding, man. He's trapped in Martin Shkreli's penthouse. Okay, so he's in America. I thought her second thought that he was back in Russia. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. No, he's nearby. <laughs> oh yeah. Let's talk about some blood money. Audit them. Audit. <laughs> Check their receipts. Jesus. Oh yeah. took the pain. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Take some art with you. God opened a hell of a door for you, man. Oh, cool. That's cool. Everything I don't think I've ever hurts. seen that in a movie before. <laughs> oh. Mr. Hey. <laughs> uh, front door <laughs> enemy. enemy. <laughs> what say you and I have a moment? Leave us, stunt team. We'd like to end our little tete-a-tete -tete right now. What's done is done. After all, we can both rebuild, right? Mm, wait. <laughs> rebuild? I burned it. All of it. <laughs> Everything you have. Oh my god. Pat. You didn't even know. Oh god. You can come after me. And if you succeed in taking me down, well, you're still obligated to refinance the entire ob shack. Which begs the question, can you? <laughs> Maybe uh, open a tiki bar in one of the lesser known Caribbean islands and live your life far from me and mine. Damn. Think it over. I'll be nearby. Ha ha ha. He knows what's up. <laughs> Oh boy. Ha! Ha! Nate. Resourceful. Resourceful guy. Say down. Mm. Oh. Oh! 
Oh, I love it. <laughs> Showdown. Oh, dude. No. Ah. Whoa! <laughs> Gang's all here. Ah! <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Love it. Safety first. <laughs> There's so many great little production design details here. Oh! Jesus! Oh shit! <laughs> awesome. Dang, and that uses the kickback. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> Great shot. <laughs> MVP. Oh! Ouch! Jesus. There you go. That's your John Wick move for gun kata. <laughs> <laughs> I got the gun back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a sick family. <laughs> Twist it. Whoa. Oh, I love oh. that one shot. That oh. was cool. I'd love to see a behind the scenes on that. No. Whoa. Uh, oh, shit. Uh, Yes. <laughs> that was a great shot. There's some amazing action shots in here. Yeah. Whoa. Oh my god, he is uh, that is bad. Wow. <laughs> oh yeah, the beginning of the movie. I forgot all that. Was the kitty? Becca, it's me. I uh, I owe you. Oh, 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 oh. Who the fuck are you? Nobody. That ain't much of an answer. Yeah. Yeah. What? <laughs> Let him go. <laughs> Ask no further questions, and get that cat some more food. He just took down a whole Russian operation. <laughs> <laughs> you should be thanking this man. By chance. <laughs> you name it, this kitchen's got it. And with that, we... Uh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I know their life. Go ahead. Thanks. Give them the house. <laughs> yeah. No questions asked. Yeah. That's for you. Hot cheer. Does this house have a... Uh... A basement. <laughs> cool. Snap diggity. Nice. That was great. Terrific. That uh, flew by. Absolutely. That really flew by. Damn. Give it admirable train for waiting for post credit scene now. Alrighty. There's got to be one. It's got to be a setup for the future. John Wick crossover. We just watched the setup for the future. Another setup for more future. Set That's his personal future. I'm talking about the franchise future. He Jake. got a call from the unknown, and so we don't know exactly what it is, but that being, he's being contacted about something. All right, fine. Then I'll change my hopes to an <laughs> innocuous joke post credit scene that doesn't amount to anything. <laughs> Got his daughter, the kitty. It's like a Wolfman story. It absolutely is, yeah. Sometimes a little more of a really similar. I feel like it's a post credit scene coming, yeah. <laughs> Tell me again about that guy you saw on the stairs. It was three guys, Pops. Three. <laughs> I still don't believe you. Well, 
it still happens. Why can't we just fly there? With this luggage? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Six sons of bitches. It's in the family, man. It is. Hey, man. I mean, gr d d Grandpa probably or Dad to them probably uh, she taught, she taught him how to do that three guy sniper shot. <laughs> I love it. The whole thing is wolf in sheep's clothing. Mm -hmm. It's like the entire movie. This guy who's it's who literally he's born into being this person, mm -hmm. and he wants something else, but it is just a veneer. Yeah, it's like a werewolf movie where you watch, where you meet someone who's actually already sort of conquered their affliction, only to then discover they actually want to lean into it and let it back out. I mean, yeah, they haven't, but it's like he's hungry. That's yeah. what that first act is. He's just hungry for more. He wants, he wants to feed again. Mm -hmm. then because yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a reaction on that bus for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, yeah. It's that, that blood hunger. It's like once he gets that first taste, he holds back. It's like, oh, it starts the Jones, you know? But there is a... Yeah, I like that it was a moral conundrum because it was it was a weird t turn on things when the couple breaks in. I heard there were Russians in it, and the girl sounded Russian when she first started speaking. Mm. And I was like, oh, they're Latinos. <laughs> but I thought it was an interesting turn of events of how he goes in there and he decides like okay kitty bracelet was taken felt the shame it's time for him to get revenge just lets them go and that's the end of what happened with there with that couple who came in and kicked off this whole event for him in his life and they just stumbles onto something else because they, they they brought it back to he just wants to feed it's not about getting revenge yeah. <laughs> you know and i thought like oh what an interesting turn i, I thought it was gonna be like oh john wick like kind of someone breaks in and then he's here to get revenge now and then oh but he took revenge on the wrong people and it's led to all this so i thought it was kind of a cooler through line mm -hmm. that it's this all stems because he just had to get back to who he was yeah. <laughs> you know yeah it's like a super personal like you, they set up all these things and i'm sure that they do factor in of like oh man he's got to prove himself to his son he's got to you know like re-establish himself as you know like the, the alpha of this yeah. family but it's really not about that at all i wish they brought some of that back at the end yeah there's something with his son yeah, since that was that seemed to be a definite focus of a big part of what he was feeling ashamed about was wanting to be like feel like a man in front of his family, mm -hmm. in front of his son especially. You know, I think we got like uh, 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 enough. You know, like when he sees he's all messed up, he's like, "Hey, I'm proud of you. Hey, hey, tackle that guy." Then his son comes up and sees, like, "Oh my God, my dad's a badass." My dad took all these but, dudes down. But I did want a moment with him and his son, just mm -hmm. like something, like even if it was like a an exchange of looks <laughs> between each other or something. Yeah. Like that is his son really. You you get that emotional beat. Is I guess is what I sort of wanted. It's also like he, I like how it's, it's both, like he, he loves his family and he's really soft and sensitive towards them. I just think freaking Bob Odenkirk plays those nuances so well. Yeah. And those, uh, okay, it's officially over. Hey. We'll continue talking about it now. Ah! I think he plays this, those um, nuances so incredibly well of... It's like when he wipes off the board of like 240 days till uh, since it's an accident or something since happened. Last incident, yeah. You know, like a lot of movies that try to have a little bit of that humor to their shoot 'em up flicks can be a little excessive. And like, I get the joke. You know, <laughs> like sometimes I, I, it felt lived in here versus. I get the joke, all right. He's a well, family they man. Do, <laughs> yeah, they didn't do an insert on it and make it a whole moment. It's yeah. that thing of like you could almost miss it if you weren't really fully aware or of or paying attention to what the gag is. It feels very really natural the way everything works in that regard of him being a family man, like of how like something like the movie shoot him up or something like Mr. and Mrs. Smith might overdo it, like. I get it, your husband and wife and your family jokes, you know? Hey, it's kind of a cartoon, it's heightened, and you're having yeah. fun with that, I understand. I, I thought they did it just enough in here to yeah. the point where it never became annoying and, and would come at surprising moments. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't like an, uh, an, it wasn't like ever a moment of over bantering. 
Yeah. Even, even amongst the family dynamics. It gets a little far-fetched for me when old man Christopher Lloyd shows up at the end and it's like, no one can shoot him. He's just, oh, God, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, It's yeah. fun. It's funny. Uh, it's a little... How is Riza the one who got shot? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I thought the moment where he's in the chair and the Russian guys show up and he like pulls out his sawed-off shotgun and blasts him. I thought that was a cool moment. Mm. And But yeah, when he's at the warehouse itself, I'm like, it's a little much, but it's still cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You've earned it. You've earned this movie. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it, it it adds because of just the scenario and because of like Christopher Lloyd, like the presence that he brings, just because we know Christopher Lloyd, and then too, yeah, he is his much performance old. is great. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, like there's a charm and a cheekiness to that that is just in fitting enough with the movie to make it okay. It's like it's it's and the movie has some height, but like you you name check those other movies, and it's not going for that level of craziness and so I feel like yeah it approaches with Christopher Lloyd maybe the ceiling of that but it doesn't for me go beyond to the point where I'm like ah, I'm kind of pulled out of this now you know yeah because when I saw the trailer it, it came back to me just now I remember with the kitty kitty bracelet moment mm -hmm. like you're really like kitty bracelet mother and like when he's screaming mm -hmm. I thought of the movie was going to be that the whole time instead <laughs> of John Wick's dog <laughs> it's his daughter's bracelet <laughs> yeah. yeah I thought it would just be a bunch of jokes about him like you know being a family man too and it, but it wasn't you know it really wasn't it felt like that's just who his character is it felt like a person we were watching accept himself like this was this bob odenkirk's really great at playing those relatable guys who have a walk around with a sense of shame <laughs> you know and it's a shame of like what his past is but he's also not proud of who he is now because he's got to repress who he really feels like he is internally and then as this wolfman story is going on he by the end accepts who he is and looks like he repairs his marriage and is able to have a fresh start while being on the stage of acceptance uh, of the kind of man that he really is and he got to show his family too so i think it's a i think it's a cool story and yeah. I did find myself legit concerned for him at, at one point. I was I was actually worried. Whereas when you compare it to, because this is the same writer from John Wick, and the and the movie was constantly compared when I heard it. Whereas opposed to, um, you know, John Wick, I'm never really worried for John Wick in that film. You're worried for everyone else. <laughs> yeah, because the way he fights, he escalatingly gets smoother throughout this film. Yeah, you know, it, watching a guy literally shake the dust off. <laughs> yeah, because in the first bus fight, he's getting his ass kicked quite a bit. Um, but he's he's like Rocky Balboa. You know, he brawls. He's bulldog. He like no matter. And I think that's what's cool distinguishing the fighting styles. He just gets in there rough and tumble style. You know, he's not clean about it. But by the time you get to the finale, where he is very strategic about it, that's when he's at his smoothest with how he handles everything. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's cool to watch a guy go through rough, tough, and then like that first fight, he gets hurt a lot. He gets thrown through the window, you know? <laughs> and then the second fight at his family home, it's still kind of like that, gets a few hits on him. And then by the time you get to the finale, it's just like, oh no, he's 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 back. He's, full <laughs> he, he, form now. he's who yeah. he's, he's who he says he used to be. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that it does really nicely to separate itself from John Wick, especially in that way of yeah, you have like with John Wick when it kicks off, it's like oh, his skills haven't aged a day. <laughs> you know, like he is completely kind of ready to jump back into this. Whereas here, you're watching this internal debate happen throughout, and I really liked like it's realized in dialogue it's realized in scenes but i think a lot of it is mostly in the performance of just the internal stuff that bob odenkirk is really good at throwing out there so that yeah you are watching this sort of back and forth within this man and i love the way they handle the the initial robbery because it as the movie goes on picks up this quality where it's like okay in that full sheep's clothing mode it's probably look I know what I'm capable of. These are just two punks who are, you know, desperate and afraid. I don't want to destroy them right now, but yeah. also that comes at a cost of, yeah, it's the overcorrection. And so it is fascinating to watch a Hitman movie where the point, I feel like there's so many like Hitman or ex badass brought back into the fold movies where it's about obviously the tension between the normal quiet life and the killer, but here it's less about picking one or the other or, or, 
it's really, yeah, just about leaning into that and finding the most actualized life for yourself based on what you're good at and what you love. Yeah. And I loved, yeah, the way that it's more about striking the balance rather than it is about, I gotta get out and do one last job, or I'm back and I yeah. gotta, you know, prove supremacy. It's like, you get the sense that when he gets the call, he is actually a little bit bummed to have to, like, go back to work so quickly. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, like, they really pin together uh, the the at-home stuff and the nitty-gritty, you know, violent action stuff into what feels like a well-rounded, complete package for the most part. Yeah, storytelling-wise, I think they really cared about that a lot. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just going to be a big style over substance with a great Bob Odenkirk movie yeah. <laughs> performance. I thought that's what it was going to be like. A great Bob Odenkirk <laughs> performance in a super stylish film. Yeah, and I was kind of surprised by, oh, you, you care a lot more about the character storytelling than I expected. I yeah. was expecting it to be one of those scenarios where it's like the cast really elevates like a pretty straightforward script. But yeah, it's like the scripting I thought had a, a thoughtful quality to it along with all your cool action movie tropes. And for Ilya Neischler, like the, coming out of hardcore Henry, yeah. I I really appreciated this movie's restraint because there are, I mean, yeah, obviously that guy has a knack for stylish action, but I thought that it avoided, for me at least, doing too much style only for the sake of style. Like, you could argue that shot where the gun flips and then Rizik catches it is just, like, I super mean, you, cool. You earned that at the but finale. At the finale, it's like, yeah. oh, you're unleashed at that point. <laughs> but yeah. there are so many great, really deliberate, just, like, pans or one -er shots that serve to really sell the action and to really make it feel tangible and coming out of something that is so kinetic and frantic and frenetic and frantic like Hardcore Henry to see something like this that is like really restrained and then hulks out when it needs to yeah. like it, it really does in a completely action movie kind of way embody that sort of seething simmering anguish at the heart of like a werewolf kind of story so like I thought this yeah. was a cool growth for that guy as a director as well you know well it's like the first the only oneer that you have of this movie is the one with the introduction of the of our villain mm -hmm. the Russian bad guy yeah and it is a great introduction mm -hmm. you know that's something I don't want to make this just a John Wick comparison I, I think the reason why I'm doing that is because that's all I heard about this movie this it, like it was just constantly compared and I get it like it's a dude who's a formerly a hitman and then fights the Russians. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it's, I totally see why people compare. I can't disregard that. Um, it's, but there are things here that I think like store, like th when you think about John Wick, that's a different type of movie in the sense that that's a, a not as funny in the, in, in the way how this is more overtly funny. And also it's um, like, there's more of like a fun pop zest to this film yeah. versus there's that. Ironic humor, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And that one, the motive for what he's doing is very different. Uh, like John Wick is a pure revenge film where this is, it comes from a, selfish desire essentially mm -hmm. is where this comes from and then it becomes about protecting yeah you know and so and i hear that word will smith really ruined that word for me <laughs> <I> know, <laughs> all right. so, as we slap the holy russians yeah, around man bob odenkirk just slapping everybody <laughs> nonstop. so he's coined that phrase now um yes so yeah it's a very different type of thing and i think too with terms of your russian bad guy I'd say for the most part. Does he lose uh, uh, some of the threatening weight as the movie progresses? Yeah, by the time freaking Bob Odenkirk shows up at uh, at the club. At the club yeah. and is incinerating the money and everything, you're yeah. like, okay, this guy's not threatening at all yeah, anymore. He ain't got shit. But at first, you know, it is it is threatening and the way they build him up, I think is really cool. Uh, that they, they do, th that's when I was, I am a little concerned for him because it's the way they, they um, the, the, the picture they paint of the kind of baddie he is mm -hmm. sounds scary and the kind of guy you wouldn't want to mess with with mm -hmm. and i think the way they they fleshed out the um uh the world that uh, our main character comes from is this hutch's real his actual name um but the Okay. The way they flesh out the world, there's some noise going out there. The way they flesh out the world that Hutch comes from, I think the way they they spread out the little bits of information about his backstory was really well done. Like how he just tells his son up front, like, I was an auditor. And yet sounds like it was it's his cover story. Mm -hmm. 
and then you find out that that's actually what he was titled yeah. and why he was titled that. I'm like, oh, that's really cool because mm -hmm. he could just be up front with his, I was an auditor, but not the kind of auditor you actually think he was. And yeah. then the way they handled the backstory with his wife, like it sounds like his wife knew something about him because hmm. uh, she wasn't surprised when she saw him and she was you know tending to his wounds and we don't know much about how they met necessarily but the way they allude to what they were like at the beginning when starting a new starting a life like this was exciting for him when starting a family was exciting hmm. for him and then now that he's just only doing that <laughs> it, how that it's lost a lot of that flavor for them and even that cliche assassin story of the day that changed was the day he didn't kill this guy because he heard his story. But I thought the way that played out and how that influenced his decision yeah. to do the family, I'm like, oh, that's fresh. Like, it's very cliche to be like, you had the gun to the back of the guy's head and then he couldn't pull for the trigger for some reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then for him to like do the whole, I caught up with him, saw he was actually, he cleaned up and he has a family life. And that, that made him want to have that as well. I think is refreshing. There's a lot of unique things I think they did here and they, they kept the life throughout. And, and, I, and I feel like visually, there was a lot of cool like visual illustrations that they, that they point out that an average audience member, I think latch on to, mm -hmm. you know, they, they framed a lot of the way him and his wife are, they, a lot of the shots were like, they're separated. Yeah. You know, there's usually something that is a divide, like a yeah. physical divider between them. Yeah, Whether that be the divide. pillow or the car when they're in the garage, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, barriers and use of negative spaces or yeah. like claustrophobic framing, you know, when they're talking to each other directly, yeah. But I wanted to see some, there are some wrap-ups that I would have liked to have seen. Like, I wanted to see the daughter get the kitty. I wanted to mm. see the daughter get the kitty bracelet. I wanted to, Something with the sun. There are some emotional beats. I'm like, I cared about that. I cared about the family yeah. stuff. Yeah, you know? for sure. So I, I wanted a little bit of buttons there, um, but it, I, it would be a lie to say I left dissatisfied by the time it ended. Mm -hmm. Well, this this reminded me kind of of how I almost feel like Hitman movies like this are sort of like Garage Rock, where it's like, yeah, there are like a lot of pieces of this. A lot of the chords are the same as like a million things you've seen, but when you put them in an interesting order and you put in a few interesting flourishes, something can feel quite new. And when you have enough unique little twists on the idea, like like you were talking about with letting that guy go, like that's when these things can really sing. And it is simple, and all it takes is some expressive communication of the themes of the story through through the filmmaking, I feel like this is a good example of one that didn't get too lost in the weeds of, you know, putting a bunch of cool effects and filters and stuff like that. It just went with, okay, what's the song we're playing? How do we accentuate it the most while also keeping it straightforward and to the point? And, uh, and yeah, like, there are- How would you describe the, the choice of songs? Like, I feel like you would be, be better at articulating, let me attempt and then hmm? you re- Right, what I'm saying <laughs> um, is that I think the choice of songs, because obviously they're the choice of songs that our character is using in this movie, they feel like because they're such oldies music, you know, they're from such a different era, kind of like the bygone era of our character mm -hmm. as well. So I love that it was constantly those were the needle drops of the film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I think you're, you know, I think you're absolutely right. It's like it's hearkening. They sound like you know they're peppy and they are, you know, warm and inviting, and they feel they are of an older time. So it feels like something more quintessential and classic, like you know the American family family household or whatever, but also in the lyrics, uh, you know, I, I don't have very intentional. Yeah, yeah I, didn't, I don't have a great recollection of every song, but I feel like the irony and the clever part about choosing those is that, yeah, they have this familial homey quality within the sound. But when you dig within the lyrics, they actually seem to be speaking to these things that actually want to get out of him or to, you know, be sort of acknowledged. And that's the thing that music is really great at is, you know, is carrying a certain level of dramatic irony when you contrast what the lyrics are saying with the sound. And I feel like this it's like there's that there's that one moment where they use Heartbreaker, which is like a pretty badass, you know, it's like mm -hmm. that's your quintessential action movie rock tune moment. And I thought that was placed nicely amid all these other ones because, yeah, 
it's the, sort of the duality to me of his life is sort of the sound is something he he does care for and he does want that warmth and when, when he's looking there's that one shot and i don't remember if it was underscored with music but where he's looking into the house the warm light is bathed on him but he's outside everything is really cold and so i feel like the lyrical content does a good job in those songs of complementing the theme of what his character is experiencing feeling wanting to let out without being like a song choice where it's like, oh, you chose this for the lyrics. I get it, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I thought they were, they were well chosen. Yeah, it's an excellent film. I think for what it is, and uh, I think it's freaking excellent. Mm. And um, the it, it becomes a little cartoony with Riza and the dad. Yeah, a little cartoony, but there's something also charming about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a family reunion still. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is. And I like the chem, even though a lot of the chemistry form with Riza is through the, um, what kind of player is that? Oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, but yeah, just like an old Music time player. radio transmitter, yeah. yeah. A lot of the communication is formed through that. I think there is a good chemistry there. By the time he shows up, it's really rewarding. Well, and even the use of that, like when he, when you used to seeing him on that, and then he calls him on the phone, and he's like, "You just want to get this number traced?" You know? Yeah. Like, yeah, it communicates the urgency even just through that motif. You know. True. Well chosen, guys. What do you think about the movie? Nobody. Leave your thoughts down below. Subscribe. Click that bell. Hit that like button. And hey, let's do a Patreon. <laughs> David Gandy, I just want to say thank you for inspiring this biopic of your life. I feel like if anybody out there is itching to let the beast out, it's you, David. You got such a lovely demeanor. You're a kind, good-hearted guy, and that's that's you. But you're also a successful, accomplished martial artist, and I feel like you probably have a little pent-up rage that you need to go out there on the streets and just let out, you know? You're like family to us, and I would feel very safe in your care. And uh, hey, if you could teach me a thing or two, I would be very grateful. No, you're not gonna have me looking at you like the sun in this movie. I'm just gonna be all admiration, David Gandy. So I uh, hope you're... Staying well and kicking ass out there, and we'll catch you next month. Catch you, David.